All right, guys. Um, I'm at the shop today with uh, two of my firearms here, and uh, actually just got. If I can get it to not glare. The 995. Nine millimeters, probably. There we go. A little bit better. But anyway, this is the the 995. Um, TS, the target stock. And then I also have uh, my uh, C9. And as you see, I got both the barrels out. One's clearly longer than the other one. But um, I want to go over uh, something that I, I've told people and told people that I've noticed. I just never owned one and was able to get a camera on it. Um, and side by side comparison, but um, as you guys that follow my page know that you know I, I work on these uh, quite frequently, and um, you know virtually, you know the the 995, uh, all the parts are all the same. I mean, if you look at the 995 slide. And stuff you're going to notice quite similarity. Um, same thing when you take the the lower, and then you take a frame of the pistol. You're just going to notice that they're they're all they're all the same. You know, it's all using a lot of the same parts, which is smart on manufacturing it. Um, <clears throat> but you know, uh, if you don't know, in my page I have videos on uh, how to fix the pistols by uh, doing some tweaks and adjustments to the magazines um, and you know and it, and it helps your reliability out of your uh, your pistols well I get people that'll have like say they'll have the, the 40 JCP and then they'll have the 40 95 whatever the carbine is or vice versa with the 45 they'll have the pistol and the uh, uh, carbine and you know I'll tell them that you know it's, it's all feeding it's all feeding coming from the magazines well here's what I get well the magazine it's not the magazine because the magazine works well in my carbine okay well if you, for one if you knew what it was why are you asking me for help um and for two, the mags were originally designed uh, around the same time that they came out with the carbines. Uh, they switched the, the platform over with the pistols. Okay, so the, the magazines, I believe, was originally designed for the carbines. And then they just integrated the pistols because basically you take the carbine apart and it's virtually, it's a pistol inside a shell. That's basically what it is with a long barrel. Um was originally designed for the car beams and then they just made them um, fit well I'm going to show you um, the reason why I believe the car beams are more reliable well they, they are the car beams are more reliable than the pistols and I'm going to show you why I think that is so um, and I've been saying it for a while um, that the, the the angle of the feed ramp on the the car beams are different than the pistol. Um, you, if you stop and think about it, you know your action, like when you lock your slide back, that area there where your magazine comes up in between the front of your slide and the feed ramp and the chamber and all that, and a car beam is going to be longer, a longer area, and they can do that um, with the pistol. You're taking that and you're crunching it down. Um, it's the same thing with the guys that'll get the 1911s. And the full-size GI 1911s work great. But then when you get the small, subcompact 1911s and you're cramming a big 45 in there, there's a lot of feeding issues that can stem from that because the angle of that feed ramp is now a steeper incline to get into the, the chamber versus a nice slope going in there um 
it's kind of hard to explain, but I, I'm hoping you're, you know, you're following along with kind of what I'm trying to get at. And I, I'm going to show you. I've, uh, I just got this carbine. Um, going through it, um, it never been took apart. It, it was pretty gummed up. Um, and yeah, supposedly it was still working. But I want, you know, me, um, you know, just so there's nothing bad going to happen. And I've, I'm inspecting all the, the parts and everything. And everything checks out. Everything's up in order. But the feed ramp was, uh, it was pretty nicked up and hadn't been polished and stuff. So I wanted to get that done. Plus, I just got another um, C9, and uh, I'm actually polishing the, the feed ramp on that, that one, too, today. So, I'm going to show you um, why I think that the difference between the reliability out of these firearms. And, you know, they're, they're virtually taking the same. And this one don't want to stay up. Um, let me see. See if I can find something to wedge this uh, carbine up with. There we go. Old roll of tape, man. You can't beat them. Okay, so, actually, I'll just go and hold it. So, if you, if you look here, okay, what's the first thing you notice off of that? They're the same ramp, but the one on the right is a longer feed ramp. And it's more of a slope heading in. Now, the one on the left, you know, I've modified to, uh, I, I ramped a barrel, so it's more smoother heading into the chamber. But, um, as you can clearly see there, um, what's going on with that. professional with my footage but I'm I try to keep it real and to the point um, as you can see where the the pistol stops right here and on the carbine you got this added piece um, and that's why I believe that the the carbines are more reliable because even if that magazine nose dives basically that feed ramp comes down um, with your magazine you know if if it's in there like so having this extra little part here even when this if it tries to nosedive it's still going to hit that that extra little extension on that feed ramp whereas with the the pistol it's still going to be about the same distance but with that cut off which they probably had to to cram it in there you know a lot of the times when I've seen the nose dives it's literally cracked the front of that now if that would have had an extension on it it probably would have fed um, you know so and the thing that uh, 
thing that gets me about the whole um, feed ramp thing is like the guns are already huge okay and that's that's not even a, that's maybe an eighth of an inch but it's the angle with which in it it's in and then also you probably won't be able to tell on film but like the pistols feed ramp is more like this the carbines is more like that so when that bullet hits that it's more properly aligned than with the wider one so the feed ramp on the carbine is actually directing um, a straight shot into the chamber whereas the pistols as a more wider feed ramp which is going to allow for more play and more walk up the the feed ramp which can cause into a malfunction so um i don't know but if you if you have one uh, or have both i you know i, I usually work on the nine millimeters um you know but uh, i have had some of the the 45 apart i haven't had the 40 carbine apart uh to be able to compare the the feed ramp side by side plus getting two of those at the same time and i'm a nine millimeter guy um it's kind of hard so maybe you guys might be able to leave a comment um go and inspect it and, and let me know um what what you're seeing with with your two if if you have the pistol and the carbine of the 40 or 45 <coughs> because what i'm seeing is uh it's a clear indication on why and uh what i was getting at with the pistols already being huge is you know that's only another eighth of an inch um, on the size of uh, you know the gun and they're already freaking ginormous you know what would have been another eighth of an inch added onto the feed ramp and made the the rest of the gun an eighth of an inch you know because when you add an eighth of an inch here you're gonna have to add an eighth, eighth of an inch here to get proper uh, clearance of the slide and the action and stuff so um i don't see why that would have made a difference on um you know like a a deal breaker for them to where they're like well we just can't we can't add that much more uh their guns are, are freaking huge anyway you know if you add an eighth of an inch on the feed ramp and then in return you had to add an eighth of an inch to the front and to the back divided up or however they would have had to done it I don't see where that would have been like a deal breaker and then the guns would have turned out as reliable as the carbines so um, i wanted to point that out and that's why with the the pistols why that magazine even though it's virtually the same the same magazine you're putting in your carbine and in your pistol why you're getting a reliability difference out of that um and that's why with the if you go back and look at my number eight video what i'm doing to the magazines is basically keeping front tension on the, the the nose of the bullet to where when it comes out of them feed lips it's already pointed up to where when it hits that feed ramp it's already properly aligned to keep it from nose diving and cracking the the tip of this feed ramp um, and that's why you have to do the tunes to the the pistols now if you do the tune to the magazine that you're going to use in your carving it's just going to make it better uh, it's not going to really like fix it because there's no problem but it's going to just uh, in return you're just, it's going to improve the reliability uh, smoother cycling uh, less damage on your casings um, so uh, that's it <coughs> um, I'm going to give you another close-up here before I uh, Before I sign off, uh, carbine on the right, pistol on the left, and as you you can, it's pretty clear. If I wouldn't have polished them so bright, you'd probably been able to get a better view so thanks for watching uh, please subscribe definitely go through and um, hit the like button on all my videos to help
push them up so that people that are looking for help it would be easier for them to find. Um, thanks for watching.